So let's start out by um, defining personal identity. And this is really my own definition. It's similar to some others, but the first thing that's very important that some people say your identity is what you and others think or know of you. And that's not so. In fact, it's somewhat opposite. Your core identity is who you are, whether you or others recognize it. So there's a part of you that's already there. It's been there. It's going to be there all throughout your lifetime. And that's a part of your DNA structure. That's a part of the generational um, things that were brought through your family. So many different facets that we'll take a look at. So that core identity is the seed of your potential. Your full identity unfolds over time if you work with it or diminishes or becomes stagnant if you work against it. The challenge in life is to discover your core identity and fulfill the purpose and destiny attached to it. And that's bringing your identity into fullness. Being an entrepreneurial leader starts with this. Once you get to this point where you understand enough of your core identity, it's almost like there's a natural button that turns on where you begin to act and think like an entrepreneurial leader. Not that you necessarily have the skills, but passion, creativity, certain things begin to drive you that you didn't ever know that you had. So when there's the argument between whether someone is an entrepreneur or not, the answer or i should say the question really is is do people have they tapped into their identity so that they can open up and trigger the entrepreneurial or the creative nature of who they are and who they were designed to be and everything flows from this your creativity your innovation your success and your significance whatever you are destined to be is already within you it's a matter for you to work with that in order to see it developed into its fullness. So what really makes up personal identity? Well, there's certain things that you're born with. There's certain things that are your life path, choices that you've made, experiences that you've had. And then third, there are moments, there are places in time and space, time and location that happen, that impact you, they define things about you. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a closer look at those different elements. So first of all, born with uh, dimension. I think these are are relatively straightforward, um, perhaps maybe not culture, but we'll talk about that more later. Uh, First of all is age, that you're born on a certain day, and so therefore you are a certain number of years, not much difference. Uh, Gender, you're born a certain way. Um, Now with science, you can make your choice and you can um, be what you were not naturally born. Um, But essentially, there are certain things about you, whether you're male or female, whether you're uh, whatever you decide that you are, uh, there are certain things that you're born with. There's also first languages. Um, You know, typically that's going to be the native tongue of your family, of your household. Um, I say first language is because once you get older, you will make life choices or people will make those choices for you. You know, if you're in a French home and you move to the United States and you get old enough, your parents will likely want you to speak English. Okay? Culture. Culture is basically the collective knowledge and experience of a group of people. That's a simple explanation and we'll talk about that more later. There's, of course, your physical and mental attributes. Um, There's um, attributes related to ethnicity and race. And there's also elements of socioeconomic class. And that's in, you know, essentially the family that you were born in. And that's not a negative. It's just these are really just statement of facts. This is what you come with when you are born. Okay. And of course, these things evolve and change over time, just like you do. Life path of dimension. First, sexual orientation. Uh, You will make choices about education. Uh, When we talk about life path and life choices, these are choices that you have made or the choices that others have made for you. 
you know, of course, when you're a child, your parents make a lot of choices for you. When you're an adult, you should be making most of your own choices. Life path has a lot to do with the geographic locations you find yourself in. Some of the healthcare practices, you know, just for example, eating, you know, as a child, do you eat a lot of sweets versus eating a lot of healthy food? Um, faith and spiritual perspectives, military or service experience. And I say service experience because they're people who have done work like with the Peace Corps. They're not, um, they're not military, but they are uh, dedicated and they are commissioned to uh, serve um, the country or a group of people in a certain way. Relationship status. Are you single? Are you married? Are you divorced? Your work experience. And of course, hobbies and recreation. So all of these things um, are just really examples of what life path means. You, one of the things that you will learn as you go through many of the units that will go, uh, be going through the different topics that, you know, we're going to give you, what we try to do is give you a comprehensive perspective, but you still need to construct it in your own understanding and what works for you. It's almost like having a master blueprint or a framework, and then you can say, these things have meaning. These things are relevant to what we're doing, and so we'll use them. And so basically, we're trying to make sure that you have that foundation and you have that framework. Moments. Those are historical and generational factors. So what is the history of your country? What is the history of your family? What is the history of your city? Um, defining moments in your personal life and that of your family. You know, some people, for example, a parent dies when they're young. That's a defining moment for them. That can be good, it can have good things, and it can have bad things to it. There's also defining moments in your culture or your society, you know, the greater society. World War II was a defining moment in world history. Um, the Vietnam War was a significant um, defining moment in, in, in the U.S. and in our culture. And the last thing that, you know, defining moments can even be those things that are far from you, but they still have a significant meaning. And particularly now when we have the Internet and there's Twitter and there's, you know, newspapers and, you know, there's just a lot of information that gets to a lot of places, we can be impacted by stories and experiences that other people have that are far away. And they could have no context for our own life. But when we hear the story and when we see the impact, it becomes a defining moment for us. So when we talk about the individual, um, the individual is made up of the mind, the spirit, and the body. Um, when we think of the mind, there are um, components, uh, three components. The cognitive, which is our perception, our storage, our processes, and retrieval of information. And this has a lot to do with our learning styles, okay? Uh, effective, there are also effective styles of, of learning. What effective means is that, and that's really our emotions, that can modify our perceptions and thoughts before or after uh, something is done with the information. So for example, um, I forgot what it's called, but, you know, if you're trying to train a puppy, for example, it's probably a good example. You know, when you give the puppy, like when you've told him to do something, um, you know, and he doesn't do it, and then all of a sudden he starts doing it and you give him a treat, you're actually modifying his thought process and his perceptions because he's now associating that positive behavior with the reward. Okay, so affection or emotion does impact our cognitive processes. And then what they call the cognitive, that's really your volition, that's your will. Um, that directs and manages the input and output of things related to your mind. And so, for example, uh, people always say, well, you know, volunteering, you're willing, you're willingly helping someone another. So someone can, you can try to make someone do something, but, and they will do it, but their will may not be in it. They're actually fighting you. So the idea is the will is a very powerful um, characteristic of the human being. And then, of course, I've already mentioned spiritual and behavioral. So how do individuals develop? They are, and this all is interacting with your mind's functions, okay? 
So it's influenced by your biological growth, the maturing process, your bodily functions, and your spirit. You're also impacted by your environment or your context. And also when you reflect um, on feedback that you've gotten from the environment as a result of overt behavior, things that you've done, that also helps you to develop. Again, the idea is you try something out and you get pleasing results. And so then you develop a new pattern, a new uh, mindset that takes you in a new path. And that's the process of development. And what happens with um, an individual is we are then, of course, influenced by different uh, interactions with other people. And that can be at the family level, that's the most immediate. Then there's the community or your culture and your society. And of course, globally now, because we have so much globalization.